This is a tube preamp. Nice. Last year I reviewed a tube preamp and also put it to the test and you guys seem to really enjoy it. So this year, believe it or not, IAMA said they wanted to send me another tube preamp for review. And I said, sure, why not send it over? I mean, let's be honest, what really could have changed? Actually, quite a lot. I was actually surprised. This offers quite a bit more than the other one. However, it is about twice the price. Why? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. <laughs> so what's new about this tube preamp? Well, it's still fairly small, but it is bigger than the other tube preamp that I had. Now it's gonna have some of the same configuration. It still has that same toggle switch power on and off. Love that noise. It's gonna have your uh, potentiometers for bass and treble, and of course, main volume. The feet are gonna be the same on the bottom here. Uh, it is gonna have some spots for tubes, but they did add these nice little red, shiny things. There really is no purpose for them, but to look cool, and I think they do look cool. But on the back, you're gonna notice a couple differences. So they do have, of course, your in and out for RCA, which you're gonna need but they also have a couple other things. They have USB on the back. That's actually a DAC, so you could use this as a preamp for your computer, or a DAC for at least your computer, which is a nice added addition. And it also has what looks like an RF antenna port. Now it does come with the antenna that you can plug into that. That's actually a Bluetooth antenna. So if you look back on the front, there is one more toggle switch that they added on the front, and this switches between aux, USB, and Bluetooth. So that's kind of neat. And the reason why I really am enjoying something like this is because I built a DIY test amplifier not too long ago. Now this is an ice powered amplifier. It's a two by 25 watt. It's not very powerful, but it's great for testing. That test amplifier doesn't have a volume switch. There's no way to adjust the bass and treble. And it definitely doesn't have Bluetooth or DAC or anything. So adding something like this makes that amplifier a lot more usable. It does have a headphone input in the front as well, which I like because when you don't want to listen to your speakers in the back, you can go ahead and plug up your headphones into it and listen to your headphones. Now I know what you're wondering is when you plug in your headphones, does it disconnect the other amplifier? Now we'll get to that in just a minute. Now some of you guys might already be lost. You're saying, what the heck is a tube preamp anyway? That's a good point. Maybe I should get into that. A tube preamp is just what it sounds like. It's something that goes before your amplifier. This goes between your source, such as a laptop, a cell phone, and then it hooks up with RCA out to your amplifier. So this now adds functionality such as Bluetooth and DAC, but that's not the real main reason why someone buys this. The real reason why someone buys a tube preamplifier, a lot of people feel like the digital amplifiers, the class D amplifiers especially, are a little bright sounding and they want it to be a little warmer. Now a tube preamp adds that warmth back to those recordings that you might be missing with a newer style amplifier. Now, if you take a look back in the 50s and 60s, the amplifiers back then were tube amplifiers. And so this kind of restores that type of sound that you might be used to. You can start to get that warmth back in your music. And this does exactly that. You do get that warmth back in your music and that is a really good thing. Now, because this uses tubes, you can actually change these tubes out as well. Now, the different types of tubes that you'll change it out with will give you a little bit different sound signature. And one of the, the ones that people really love are the GE ones. Now, I didn't test it with the GE ones, but the cool thing is it's relatively inexpensive to try the different tubes. But IAMA does make a couple claims. They claim that you can increase and decrease your bass by six decibels and the same with the treble. The truth of the matter is, any manufacturer can claim whatever they want. We have to test it to find out if it will actually do that. So will it? Well, let's find out. Now, the first thing I wanted to test out was the DAC. To much of my surprise, as soon as I plugged up that USB, my computer recognized it. It didn't need to download anything. It was just ready to go. My computer even switched over to it. So, so far, we're off to a good start. All right, so it shows up as a headphones. Now, if we go to properties, all right, we'll disable all enhancements. Let's see what it gives us. All right, so it gives us up to 22 channel, 24-bit, 192 
hertz, well, 192,000, so 192 kilohertz studio quality. So that looks like what this is capable of doing. Let's just see if it works. It does. So that is what your DAC is recognized, at least by Windows. All right, now let's go ahead and test out the headphone input and see how quickly it switches over. All right, now let's plug in the headphone unit. Oh, wow, that's headphones. That switched over immediately. Let's do it again. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh yeah, headphones again. Oh, that was fast. I gotta say, one of the things that is really impressive about this unit is as soon as you plug those headphones in, it switches over. I mean, it's instantaneous. And the same thing when you unplug it. So on Bluetooth, for example, unplug it from Bluetooth and it goes right back to that Bluetooth signal just like that. And that has been really impressive. There's usually some sort of delay there I haven't noticed any delay with this unit. But let's be honest, this antenna, well, it's kind of ugly. It really takes away from the look of the IAMA unit. And I really like the look. So I want to test the Bluetooth range out. When I had this antenna on, I was able to walk anywhere in my house and never lose signal. I gotta be honest, that's pretty impressive because there's not very many units I've tested where I've been able to do that. Now for reference, my house is two stories, about 3,500 square feet, and the unit was about directly centered in the house on the top floor. Still, it was really impressive to get that full range. What happened when I removed this? Well, I was able to walk out of my office in about five feet, and then the signal dropped. So, if you're thinking about using this unit without this antenna, think again. Even though I've been really impressed with it so far, we still have to do some final testing, and we really need to see what those knobs will do. In order to do that, we have to take a baseline measurement of the speaker that we're testing, and then check the knobs individually to see what they do. What you'll notice is that the volume control knob, when it's in the center, doesn't line up with the control. But if we move it forward a little bit, it does line up and the frequency response lines up as well. That does mean that you will be able to get your speakers louder if you turn that knob all the way up. It also means that probably for the best sound quality, you probably wanna to tone it down to about where I have it. The bass knob, I did check that out. It looks like right around one kilohertz, maybe a little bit less, it starts to deviate. And we're getting much better than the six decibels it says we should be getting. We're getting plus about 10 decibels. And when we check the minus setting on that, well, it's about the same thing. We're getting minus 10 decibels or thereabouts. So that is a huge plus. That means that we're getting a little bit better. It actually lines up with the other IAMA tube amp that I tested out before as well. Now when we check the treble, it once again is starting to really deviate around that one kilohertz mark. And we're getting a little bit better than the six decibels that it's calling for. It's about six and a half decibels. So either way, whether you want to call it six or six and a half, it either meets or exceeds what they have claimed. So that's a good thing. Uh, and if we turn this back down, uh, we're getting, yep, once again, minus six and a half decibels or so. So we're getting right there. And honestly, it looks like this speaker could use a little bit of EQ on the high end. Now you saw it tested. You're probably wondering what my thoughts are on it. Uh, truthfully, it's the best tube preamp that I've tested to date, and there's really not anything I don't like about it. There's two things that I guess could be improved upon, and that's, you know, that Bluetooth antenna is fantastic. I mean, it works great. I mean, I, like I already told you, I can get Bluetooth range all throughout my house. It is kind of ugly, so if they could figure out a different way to do that and still keep the range, that would be nice. Another thing that would be kind of cool is if it would have a remote control. That way you could use this further away and control it with a remote. I think, you know, especially in the 21st century, that's something that is a nice addition to have. Overall though, that's just things that would be icing on the cake. Truthfully, this particular tube preamp does everything I want it to do. It has the DAC, it has the headphone input, it has the Bluetooth with ridiculous range. I am very happy with it. And the fact that it does better than its published specs, I mean, that's a win-win for me. 
So if you're looking for a tube preamp and this fits the bill, then I would say go ahead and get it. Now, if you don't need all the added features and things of that nature, then check out my other video on that. I'll link both the video and the preamp to it, and maybe that's the preamp for you. Otherwise, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. This is Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out. Now, the preamp did come with a few things. It did come with, of course, your amplifier, it came with your power cord, and it came with a USB cord. Uh, but it's bright blue. I mean, very bright blue. I, I don't know. I mean, couldn't you just do black? I, I just I just can't get past the bright blue cord. I mean, I don't know. For me, I would much rather see a black one with this, or maybe even a red one that matches the red around the tubes, but uh, bright blue doesn't seem like it just, it just doesn't belong.